Today I'm going to try out a half dozen different paint combinations to try to nail down a process for speed painting yellow so that I can get my Bad Ab War Carcaradons painted up with their yellow and brown camouflage. They're going to look like this by the time I'm done with this whole process, but first let's get started by doing the paint tests on a bunch of Firstborn Marines. So I started with base coating these models in a handful of different colors that I want to test for a few different versions of a yellow that I've seen online. And then because I'm a nerd, I did a little bit of recreational spreadsheet making both as a visual aid for the video and so that I can keep track of what the hell I exactly I am doing with each of these. So now I've got these minis base coated and I'll talk a little bit more a little bit later about the theory behind the colors that I used. But for now, let's move on to the next step, which is basically going to be kind of the slap chop method where I'm going to dry brush a zenithal onto it. And before I get into showing you that and talking about the colors, let me talk about the brushes that I'm using. When it comes to dry brushing, I have used the makeup brushes from the dollar store plenty. And I've found that while the medium and smaller ones do work perfectly well for dry brushing for about a buck 25 a piece, these larger ones start to become problematic. I thought this would be good for base coating some ruins. I thought it would be good for dry brushing some larger vehicles. And these bristles are just too smooth and it just doesn't hold as much paint as I want it to and makes it more difficult for dry brushing. So those are out of the question purpose-made dry brushes. I want to try something much nicer, like the Artist Opus dry brushes. I've heard plenty of good things about them. However, I tried to find a cheaper alternative. I did go on Amazon. I found a set of three of these brushes for about eight bucks, nine bucks, something like that, and it wasn't worth it. These things were awful. I'll show you a screen cap of the listing just so that you can see what to avoid. These things, they smell like mothballs. They don't clean well. They've been shedding fibers all over the place. I spend more time picking loose bristles out of the paint than I do managing to paint with these. These are garbage and they're not worth your time. So you've got the much cheaper option of just taking one of your old base coating brushes that's frayed, that's dried out, that you can't really use for base coating anymore and just use that. This was just an art store brush to begin with. I personally really threw that. I personally really love like a quarter inch chisel tip brush for base coating anyway. So I've got several of these. These are really the perfect brushes for doing your dry brushing as far as I'm concerned. A beat old base coating brush before it's hit quite the end of its life. Let's move on to the base coating while I tell you about the colors. So the big test and the one that I've heard about endlessly lately is using a pink base coat. I didn't use a really light pink. I used more of like a hot pink or a magenta as the base coat. Now, if you haven't had it explained to you yet and you're wondering why people are using pink as a base coat under yellow, it's simple color mixing that might not dawn on you because you don't really think of pink in terms of color mixing. So of course your red and your yellow is gonna give you orange. Pink is just watered down red. So you're going to get those deeper yellows and orange tones in the recesses and in the undersides and in anywhere that you left the strong pink when you come back with a yellow contrast paint, speed paint, or anything that's really translucent, an ink, a wash, a glaze, a stain, as long as it's yellow over pink, you're gonna get those oranges. So I'm gonna use Vallejo Dead White as my Zenithal color there so that on the top parts, on the highlight parts, on all the parts that I wanna stand out, we're gonna get a really strong yellow. And then as we get down into the recesses and the lower regions of the model, it's going to deepen down into that orange kind of tone. Now I have two different contrast paints I'm testing today. I and in yellow and Imperial Fists, both in the Citadel range. And so I painted two of these magenta marines that are both getting the Viejo dead white zenithal. Now I want to test out something a little different with these same two yellow contrasts and so I'm doing two of these marines that were painted in Viejo leather brown which is kind of a yellow tan sort of brown to begin with. Another common piece of art wisdom and model making wisdom is that you don't want to tone all the way down to black in the recesses when you're painting yellow. You really only want to go down to brown instead. So I base coated two of these in brown. And instead of doing the dead white, I want to keep a warmer tone to go with that brown. And I'm going to do this dry brush Zenithal with Vallejo bone white instead. It's just a little bit of a warmer white. It's not quite as bright as the dead white. And I want to see what happens when I do the bone white and leather brown under these same two yellow contrast paints. Now, my last two models are not going to use a contrast method. I really do love a dry brush method, and that's what I'm going for with my last two. And I've just done 
one of them in a pure black and one of them in Viejo Beastie Brown, which is a darker brown than the leather brown. And I'm just going to dry brush those models, which will generally lean more towards a grimdark aesthetic than the contrast method does. And for both of these models, I'm going to start by dry brushing top to bottom in sort of a faux zenithal style, starting with Citadel Avalon Sunset. It's my favorite way to paint yellow prior to these tests. It's just usually more time consuming because I'm usually doing it in a more purposeful and layered way rather than the speed paint way. And it takes me forever to get it right. I've done just a couple feature models in the past before, like this Orc Batmobile buggy, which I absolutely adore, but is one of my longer paint time miniatures. And I don't want to have to do that to myself for 20 or 30 Marines that I'm about to paint yellow. But either way, we're going to start with the dry brushed Zenithal of Averland Sunset, and then we're going to see what we need to do after that to bring the color up and bring the detail up, whether that's going to be edge highlighting or some glazing or just coming in and doing a little bit of a lighter coat of dry brush of a brighter color. Not sure yet. Let's see what everything looks like now that we've dry brushed it all, and we'll move on from there. And see, this is why yellow on black tends to be shied away from. Now he's still got another coat of dry brushing to do and then a ton of other work, but that black and yellow is coming off a little garish and a little bit more like either a bumblebee or a sports team, whereas the quick first pass of yellow on the brown undercoat just looks a little bit more unified. But let's get the second more even coat of a dry brush on these guys, and then we'll do the carousel shot. Now let me not only interrupt, but also contradict myself for a moment here, and let you know that I did not do only a second dry brush coat on these guys. When I was done doing a second pass with the dry brushing, I wasn't really satisfied with the level of coverage or brightness on the higher surfaces up on top where the pauldrons and the helmets were so i went back through and i hit them a third time just in the helmets and the pauldrons and the top of the backpacks and on that coat i actually stippled rather than dry brushing and that way i had a little bit greater control over the amount of paint going in an area and where it was going so that I could really get those top edges. And the reason I wanted to increase the brightness in just those areas is because when you're playing on the tabletop, those are the areas you really want to pull focus to. It's not as important on the tabletop to have the legs be as detailed as the pauldrons, the head, the weapons, the items that you're looking for when you're trying to read what's on the model. In fact, it's actually probably more important if you're doing tabletop standard to make sure that those details such as the body and legs kind of fade into the background in relation. I'll also note at this point that while this one who's black and yellow is still a little high contrast from my tastes, this one over here without the beaky helm uh, who is brown and yellow, he just doesn't have enough contrast. So we're going to have to see what happens in the next few steps, which one of these I prefer. And here we are, we've got two Marines in pink and white two of them in brown and white with the darker bone white and two of them with the Averland Sunset Zenithal sort of dry brush over brown and black base coats. Now the next step should be very easy for four of these guys so I'm going to slap some yellow contrast paint on all of the ones that are in white right now and then we'll come back and revisit these two in Averland Sunset after the fact and see how they compare once we do a little more detail work. So let's take a look at what we got out of each of these color combos. First up is what turned out to be my favorite surprise. It is the pink undercoat with the white zenithal, a bright white zenithal, and then the imperial fist contrast or the Iandin yellow contrast. You can see the Iandin yellow is the deeper, more orange toned one. The brown undercoated ones also looked good, but just don't have the same dimensionality to them. They don't have the same depth. If you're looking for a little bit of a darker yellow and what you're going after, that might be what you want to utilize. And remember, that's a brown undercoat with a bone white zenithal rather than a bright white zenithal to bring the tone down overall across the whole model. And then finally, I did take a look again at my Averland Sunset dry brush models. I decided, well, I know that right now that's not a speed paint technique. I know that's going to need a lot of highlighting and a lot of manual work to get it looking good. So let me see what happens if I just slap this Imperial Fist yellow over the top of a yellow base coat and see if we get anything else out of it. Now, I think these look pretty 
good as far as having a really solid and rich yellow base coat, but it's far from a speed paint technique. There's still a ton of work to really get these guys up to a good standard. So I'm going with the magenta and white. And while I like the I end in yellow just as it is right here, better than the Imperial Fist, and I think the Imperial Fist is a little too bright, I did have to think about the fact that my chosen color scheme has a brown striped camouflage pattern over this yellow. So I tried that brown scheme over both of these yellows because I was thinking, it turned out to be correct, that the brown on top of that high end in yellow base coat really got a little too muddy. It got a little too dark. And so I chose this guy, the Imperial Fist Yellow, over the magenta and bright white Zenithal as the successful test for my Bad Ab War Vet Carcaridons. Now there's one more improvement that I need to make. So when I primed all the rest of the Marines that I needed to paint in this batch, I spray primed them with the Rust-Oleum 2X Magenta, and then instead of a dry brush Zenithal, I gave them a spray can matte white Zenithal to get a little bit smoother application and a little bit more focused focus on those top edges and the pauldrons and the helmet. This is what a couple of my Primaris test models looked like at that point. And then this is what they look like after their yellow contrast coat and then after their camo coat and just a few of the details picked out, the black and the silver details. I'm happy with these guys as tabletop standard. They would need a little bit more work if I wanted to bring them up to a display quality. So if I need to paint a character like this, they'll get a little bit more attention, but I'm pretty happy with how these guys turned out. At the end of the day, these Primaris Marines have six paints on them. That's the pink, the white, the contrast, and then brown, black, and silver for details. Relatively quick. I've got nine more batch painted behind these, and then just another nine to go. Quick hobby update for those who may be curious. These two units of Marines will bring me up to about 400 points of my 3,000 point goal for getting some Carcaridons painted this year, and I've surpassed 500 subscribers on this channel. If you're not subscribed just yet, you can help out by hitting that subscribe button, checking out more speed painting tutorials, like this, more of my kit bash, toy bash, DIY terrain sort of stuff that I've got going on. More videos on the way. The next piece is going to be turning some toys into some sci-fi terrain. Hopefully I'll be seeing you around.